Well, hey, everyone, this is Janice Wright from the Garrison Public Affairs Office. And this week, we learned how to boss up with the Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers program. All that and more on this episode of the Great Big Podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Franklin of the Garrison Public Affairs Office. And today we are doing a special focus on the BOSS program or the Better Opportunity for Singer Soldiers here at U.S. Army Garrison Fort Cavazos. This program plays a vital role in enhancing the lives of single service members. And we have some key, some key very important questions for our guests today. But first... Let's thank our guest and ask our guest if they will introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about themselves. Okay, so uh, my name is uh, Specialist Samuel Overman. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, I was attached with uh, 9th Hospital Center, uh, 1st Medical Brigade, and while I, while I was there, I served as the uh, uh, UPAR, uh, Unit Public Affairs Representative, mm-hmm. and the BOSS Representative, so... Before coming on to the boss team, that's what I was doing. And so for you, just how does it feel to to be a member of the boss program? It feels amazing because I get to assist with making a soldier's life so much better. So really, can you provide any specific examples of how participating in the boss program has improved the quality of life for single soldiers? Yes, ma'am. So as single soldiers you know you're always in the barracks you know you're always at work and to go take trips with the boss program like sea world uh, that's a, a recreation and leisure event yeah yeah you just went to sea world last week didn't uh, you yes sir yeah how was that it was amazing i loved it and it's all free of charge correct that was yes ma'am mm. uh because it was attached with a program called the waves of honor and what they did was they supply one free ticket for active duty and their dependents to go once a year. Nice. So that was a lot of fun. You know, we took a, a group of them uh, about two, two and a half hours to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And then, like, with life skills, you know, I went to a license to carry course okay. and got to get my LTC. And... Yeah, it was a lot of fun doing that. Okay, so it's it's fantastic to hear about these these tangible life skills that that you guys are being that soldiers are being able to take away from uh, being a part of the boss program. I know the boss program is also very big in the community building, and I know that they contribute a lot to the 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 area outside of the gates. Can you tell us a little bit about? how that sense of community and camaraderie goes a long way with the service members in the area. Uh, yes, sir. So we did, we just had our uh, stream cleanup in mm-hmm. downtown clean. And that was a lot of fun. You know, we got to meet community members and just work closely together. And it was a lot of fun. Okay. Do, so how, how much did you, do you know how much trash about how much trash you guys picked up that week? It was a lot. It was a lot. Yes, we found from rebar, clothes, what? all all sorts of things. Any shopping carts? Yes, one shopping cart. You know, whenever I whenever I would do cleanups and I would find shopping carts and I'm like, how did this shopping cart get here when there's literally no HEB or whatever store for at least 5 miles? So that means someone was <laughs> dedicated enough to bring that shopping cart all the way down here. Exactly. I remember uh, the last time I covered a boss uh, cleanup event, it was in downtown Colleen, and we actually did come across those shopping carts, but they used them. They used them to, you know, cart the trash to where it needs to go, so they actually, you know, made good use of them. Repurposed. Right. Repurposed. That's a better word. Yes, wow. So it, it's it's clear that, you know, community is at the heart of the boss program. So can you share more about the role single service members play in shaping the program's initiatives and addressing you know, quality of life concerns. Yes, ma'am. So, um, like our defects, we had a big issue trying to enough soldiers to work the defects. Mm-hmm. And because of rotations and all sorts of things. 
So with that, that was a big issue. But we we brought our concern to Sergeant Major Hall, and he got it done for us. And it's been a b- big blessing. There's, I mean, with everything, there's going to be big lines. Um, I actually went to the defect this morning. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, but, you know, with, you know, AC, it being hot here, we yeah. need AC. Uh, my barracks um, had no AC. Yeah. So my first sergeant brought that up to my attention, and I wrote up a uh, DA-7380. And uh, got it submitted. And, uh, that's it, the the, the DA seventy three eighty. That's the work form. Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah, we request for work form. Yeah. So uh, we got that, and it came about. You know, it got fixed. You you know, I, I don't want to say how. You know, you have the the garrison sergeant major in your your guy. You guys is hip pocket, but I know that sergeant major Hall he listens to you guys. Like, if there's something that he can do and it's within his power, he's gonna go out of his way to make sure that he's taking care of, especially of those soldiers who are staying on the installation, who live in the installation, who eat in the defect, the dining facilities here on the installation. So I know it's 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 a it has to be a great feeling to know that you can go to to one of the senior non commissioned officers on. For Cavazos and say, hey, this is the problem that we're having. Can you give us some guidance? Can you give us some some kind of help or, or some kind of relief? I, I know that has to be a great feeling. Exactly. I mean, he's a great help uh, to the boss program. He's actually our uh, senior enlisted advisor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he listens to us single soldiers. He pops in once in a while to our meetings. And, you know, it's a pleasure to have him, you know, to have somebody listen to us and get things that you know, matter to their soldiers' lives. So I, I know he pops in down there. Does he ever play ping pong or, or, or pool, or he just he's just strictly business down there, making sure everything's took care of? I mean, we'd love to have him play ping pong with us. <laughs> okay. I'll make sure I'm going to – you know what? I, w- next time I see him, I'm going to be like, hey, so I'm Adrian. The soldier said next time you come down there, they have a ping pong table. They're ready for you. We have two, to be exact. Two. Oh, okay, two. I will make sure I let them know. Nothing wrong with a little healthy competition. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and and if you haven't played sports with the Sergeant Major, he is a very competitive person. <laughs> I, I think I think he, he wants to win at everything, but I think he knows that some things he can't, but it's okay. <laughs> um, you know, that you know, just just hearing how great that of a of an impact that is, that having that Sergeant Major relationship is uh, I, th- I think it's great to hear that. So let's go ahead and connect a couple of dots here between, you know, the boss program and the broader military community. How do you see the boss programming aligning with the bo- broader military goals and priorities of the military community, particularly in those when it comes to promoting well-being and community involvement? Um. So, I mean, networking is really important. So, you know, boss has really helped myself and many others to, you know, reach out to our senior enlisted advisor mm-hmm. and to grow connection with that. But also, like, like through this, like through this podcast, like I've gotten to come out and speak, and um, I've met with a lot of people, met with my sergeant majors mm-hmm. and all this other stuff because of boss. And I, you know, couldn't ask for anything better. Okay. That is excellent to hear. So I know we touched on a little bit of your community service projects earlier, but I wanted to see if you could describe uh, some of the most memorable uh, community service projects or outreach efforts that you guys have led within the community. Yes, ma'am. So, I mean, this past weekend we went out, we had an amazing turnout. Um, The amount of smiles I saw on everybody's face and, you know, to help the community is, is a big thing for me. So, you know, to see city of clean officials mm-hmm. happy with what we're doing, you know, while we're there, we're not just picking up trash. We're there to, you know, integrate with people from all over post. And because of boss, mm-hmm. you know, so, single soldiers from 504th MI Brigade to, you know, 1st Cav, 3CR, you know, it's, it's community. And, you know, me being at first medical brigade, um, I don't, from before I went over to boss, I never got to see really everybody Yeah, from different units. So to see these people 
and get to talk with them, you know, all walks of life. That's what the military is about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was amazing getting to talk with them. So was this uh, past week, it, it happened this past weekend? Yes, ma'am. Was this another uh, cleanup initiative for Voss? Yes, ma'am, it was. And where was it located? It was located at Rose Hartford Community Center, right near the uh, dog park. Okay. How many uh, volunteers did you have show up t- to we that? We had 11. Nice. Including myself. Okay. Okay. You know, projects like that sound incredibly impactful. You know, how can our listeners here are here in the Fort Cavazos area, but haven't necessarily, who don't really know how to get involved? What would the message you would like to convey of why it's important for more single service members to engage with the boss program? So for that, you know, soldiers come from AIT or different installations. And I mean, from our newcomers brief, you know, we're, we're present there. Uh, we speak, we have a table set up, but also like we're located right across from Sprockets mm-hmm. and the Theodore Roosevelt defect um, in building 9212. We're open uh, five days a week. Okay. At um, from zero nine to 1800 and we're available. There's always people there and uh, we'd like to have more involvement. So when people come out, you know, when people get involved in the in the boss program, what type of uh, they get awards? Oh, they they have that opportunity to get awards for volunteering and stuff like that, correct? Yes, sir. Through Vemus, um, you lo- so each unit has an allotted amount of hours you need to earn the MOVSM, which stands for Military Outstanding Service or Volunteer Service Award. You know? Yeah, and uh, you know, for my unit, it's one hundred and fifty, mm-hmm. and you know, you submit it, and it's all tracked on Venus. Okay. So I kind of really resonate with the message you guys are, are, you know, providing for our listeners. I was once a young soldier. Uh, I never participated in a program such as BOSS. However, I do wish uh, that I would have gotten involved in something like that. I think it really would have made a positive impact on my, you know, military career. So kudos uh, to what you guys do. Uh, looking ahead, what are you know some future plans and aspirations for the BOSS program? So here in October, uh, October 14th, mm-hmm. I believe, uh, we are hosting a murder mystery. Mm. So Sounds that's going to be exciting. It's going to be uh, a Halloween party. Okay. So get in your best costume and j- come join us. And then for, but also on... This weekend, we are going to the Dallas State Fair, um, and we get a discounted price for being a single soldier. Uh, we meet at the boss headquarters. Almost every event, we meet at boss headquarters, and then we'll uh, transport you to the event um, for soldiers that don't have rides or things like that, um, like service events and all sorts of things. So we have a pretty big calendar. Nice, nice. So you clearly, you know, provide, you know, an outlet for soldiers. You provide a way for them to give back to the community. What type of individuals are you looking for to join the BOSS program? So individuals who are single soldiers, uh, that means, you know, could be NCOs, could be officers, uh, could be geo bachelors, uh, people who don't have their spouses here. Um, We also have, you know, single parents come through the events and we have child care uh, provided uh, by CYS and yeah. And if there were three traits that you would want uh, future boss representatives to have, what would they be? Uh, be able to reach out to soldiers and to, you know, kind of network, you know? So reaching out for community involvement. Yes, ma'am. Networking. And what would the last one be for you? For me, yeah, for, for you, from your for perspective, you. enjoyment. I love it. Enjoy what you do. You know. Well, Samuel, thank you so much for shedding some light on the incredible work that you guys do down there at the BOSS program for Fort Cavazos. It's been a pleasure having you on the show today. Yes, sir. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity.
There's nothing more fun than going boating with friends. We were all out having a good time when all of a sudden, my best friend's hat flew off and without thinking, he jumped in the water to retrieve it. When we turned the boat around, he seemed to be struggling to keep his head above the water. We all started yelling, pull the cord, pull the cord! I pulled the cord and my life was saved. I was wearing a belt-type inflatable life jacket, the wisest decision I ever made. Life jackets worn, nobody mourns. Learn more at pleasewearit.com. You know, Janice, being able to talk with the boss program and have them come in here is pretty cool because, you know, it, it takes a lot to be the boss, especially on Fort Cavazos. Absolutely. I was really, really impressed about their presence in the community and all the great things they do uh, to, you know, help keep clean, clean and just ba- make it a better place to be. Yeah. You know, they I'm kind of I'm kind of sad that they got to go up to uh, go down rather to SeaWorld. And I didn't get to go because I don't know if you know this or not, but I love the aquatic life. And I love like anything dealing with water. And I'll, SeaWorld is pretty cool if you haven't got a chance to go down there. And I think going out, you know, doing stuff like that as an adult is way cooler than it was as a kid. I agree. But you're not a single soldier. (laughs) Well, it doesn't matter. I I am still single. You can go on your own. I know, but I I like going with other people. And I think going with the the single soldiers would be cool because they would have fun. And it's it's a bunch of people and we could have fun. We can be a community and go down there. So it'd be fun. Speaking of community, uh, thanks to the efforts of the community and family housing residents, there has been a reduction in water consumption. Yes, this is much appreciated by the Directorate of Public Works. I was going to say DPW. However, Belton Lake continues to remain at 58% capacity. So still got to watch out there. Uh, Water conservation is still important for everyone meaning mandatory stage two water conservation measures remain in place until further notice. So don't forget you guys, no watering of all types of landscaping between the hours of 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. daily and report all on post leaks to DPW by calling 254-287-2113. What's that number one more time? That number again is 254 284-287-2113. Okay, I got it. (laughs) Great. And off post leaks, uh, you will report to your local city water department. So good job, everybody, with the water conservation. Woot, woot. So we've got something going on this evening at Texas A&M University Central Texas, which has partnered with the National Mounted Warrior Museum, Warrior Museum, sorry, to present the 13th annual Central Texas Military History Symposium. That takes place tonight at 6 p.m. at the Bill Yowell Conference Center at Texas A&M University Central Texas campus. So basically, if you're into film, this would be a great professional development opportunity for you. Are you going to attend? Eric? If I get a, if I get off in time, I may stop by there because I know, uh, you know, it's right there on the way home. So I may stop by on my way uh, heading home. So, Eric, what, what do you got going on this weekend? Um, I think uh, I'm going to stop by the thrift store because I think that the yard sale is this weekend. And I think that's pretty much all I have going on this weekend. You are absolutely right. There's a lot going on this weekend. So it's Friday or tomorrow, uh, BOSS, the Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers program, in, in conjunction with the Fort Cavazos Directorate of Family and Morale and Welfare and Recreation. DFMWR. Yes. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm just spelling it out so everybody knows what I'm talking about. I just like saying DFMWR. DFWMR. Is that it? DFMWR. <laughs> Department of Family. See, that's what, why it, I, it, I just like saying it. it. DFMWR. <laughs> <laughs> And so, well, anyway, they're hosting the Single Soldiers Fest from noon to 5 p.m. Cool. So uh, the event is free for all single soldiers, single soldier parents, unaccompanied soldiers. Uh, you'll enjoy some team building competitions, food trucks, music food. giveaways. Sounds like it's going to be an awesome time. So I might have to stop by there just for the food trucks. Just, just to get check out some food, see what they got going on. You have me at food. Yeah, pretty much. There you go. 
And if that's not enough for this weekend, like Eric mentioned, there's the uh, post-wide yard sale. Now, if you guys, you know, I would say get there early so you can get, get the good stuff. It starts at 9 a.m. and it will be right across from the Fort Cavazos thrift store. So, And if you don't know where that's at, it's right across from the uh, main exchange on Clear Creek, Clear Creek Road. I, exactly. And like I said, I would say get there early so you can get first picks. And, right, if, you, and if you have any old camera uh, cameras, like I'm talking ancient cameras, like like turn of the century type camera stuff, let me know. Contact me up here at our email and I will gladly make an offer for it because I like old camera equipment. Well, if you want to see some cameras, you might see some at the military vehicle display that they're going to have. Uh, displays from the World War, World War II, Korean War, the Vietnam era military vehicles. And it will be on display from 9.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. So you might see some old cameras. We did last year when we covered that event. Yeah, I was really excited about seeing the, the World War II ones where they had the, the huge cameras that they took pictures of the uh, the battlefield. It was really cool. I liked yeah, it. Yeah, I, I left there really, really wondering how they, you know, did what they did with such huge equipment. Yeah, it Compa- was fun. Especially compared to what we use now. Compared to the phone that we have now that can do, do almost the same thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that pretty much wraps up what we got com- coming up this weekend. All right. Well, we like to thank you guys for listening to us and be sure, as always, to take care of each other and take care of yourself. And thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Bye. This podcast is a U.S. Army Garrison Fort Cavazos and Fort Cavazos Public Affairs production. Have a question or want to share some of your wisdom with us? Drop us an email at fortcavazos at gmail.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Fort Cavazos Army. And as always, be sure to leave us a review and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.